right guys it's bright and early we've got up and moved chickens and uh ate our breakfast so we gotta get this stuff going You can see all the stuff in there. This right here pot is the one that the cheesecloth fell into yesterday. That, um, so technically, I guess it's sort of not strained. <laughs> this is exactly why we're doing it again this morning. And most of that stuff you see in there, that's nothing but little chunks of the stalk and uh what looks like dried leaves and stuff like that so <clears throat> really nothing to worry about but it's definitely not nothing you want in your molasses this one you can see all the stuff that come to the top but that's just like foamy stuff and i do believe that might be parts of the stalk too that's crumbled up in there i'm not mm -hmm. sure but it's not as dirty as it's not near as dirty as this pot is though Well, it may not be, but if it ain't, that's just what we'll cook. Let's we try some in my other pot that I got down there. Look, I just made a mess. You hear me? What other pot? I got another one of these down there. Have you? Get both corners. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's cool. Well, it's cool that was hanging down. I want to show y'all. Just how much cleaner that looks now that's what you want to see is that pure green juice it's looking see good right here's what come out of it that's why we're filtering it one more time yep so for those of you who don't know this uh process right here if we were doing it on a larger scale we wouldn't be doing what we're doing right now all of this filtering and everything would have done been done we'd have had like a big setup when we were squeezing the juice and it would have filtered then and the juice would have been ready to cook and we wouldn't be cooking it in a pot we'd be cooking it in a big vat which if you watch the video of when the guy gave us all the stuff to do this with you'll see the vat that you would typically use to cook it in <laughs> and so where we're only doing a small amount today to kind of test the waters and just see how it goes we're going to try cooking it in a pot that's the only reason we're doing it in a pot it's the only reason we've done this whole thing this way we just wanted to get a small amount of juice and just play with it and see what happened because you know it would suck to go and squeeze a hundred gallons of juice and ruin it so we figured we'd be better off to ruin a small amount of juice versus ruining a whole big old batch of juice all right guys first things first make sure that your propane burners work <laughs> like they're supposed to before you take on something big like this okay uh that's what me and andy done run into this morning but luckily my in-laws live right down the road and they got one that works so anyways we've got actually quite a bit more juice than we thought we did so i've got two pots going and i've got a candy thermometer in here but um, this is how I'm kind of keeping an eye on the temperature on both of these pots here. This one does not have the thick bottom. So this is the leftover juice. I mean, it was better than pouring it out, uh, but it may stand the chance of scorching. We'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, this is what I got going on right now. We're gonna see how this goes. This one is a little ahead of my second pot. Um, but I'm starting to see it boil a little bit. And it looks like I'm on about 205 right now. So I'm gonna start really keeping a close eye on it. And this stuff right here, the little skimmies, I got a wooden spatula and it's just kind of sticking to it. So I'm trying to keep that stuff scraped off. I've got these big paddles that came with this stuff this fella gave us, but they won't fit in these pots, so 
spatula it is. It's been cooking now for or coming to temperature about two hours. Two hours in right now. And you know, after we do it a few times and I know what I'm doing and how close I need to watch it at what stage, it probably won't be quite as bad because I've been like keeping a super close eye on it. Like I've just been like standing here at these pots, watching the temperature, you know, because I didn't know what to expect. So. And it may not be no count, may not be feeling deep. I guess we'll see. You don't know till you try. In the wind today, it blows through here so hard, so hard sometimes it's putting my fire out under these. But that ain't no big deal. That's another reason I'm kind of hanging out real close by. See, it's just sticking just pretty as you've ever seen. Now, from my understanding, if you don't get these little skimmies off here, this stuff floating to the top, it can make you have a bitter product. Um, I don't know. I just know you're supposed to get it off. It ain't quite as hot as it needs to be. We're about five hours into it right now. Started at nine. Yeah. And it's now two. But it didn't start boiling. It took it a couple of hours to start boiling. We may have done it too slow. I don't. I don't really know. But yeah, we we slow. have no clue. That's what all we've been scraping out of it. Still just stirring and scraping. It's definitely cooked down though, because right there's the line where uh oh the camera fogged up. That's where the line where it started at. And this pot over here, you can see it right in there. So it's cooked down a lot. But we probably got, what, another five hours? Probably. <laughs> so we better have plenty of propane and uh, plenty of patience. It's been fun though. Yeah, and it smells good, y'all. It really does. It smells delicious. It smells really good. But we we're just keep, keep it going. Keep at it. <laughs> so we're definitely starting to see a change. It's really gotten a lot darker. It's getting a little thicker. We're not quite to the string yet. We're getting mighty close. It is smelling delicious. Well, this pot's getting closer. Is that right? Sooner than we expected to. Yep. Now's the point where I think we can mess it up if we don't know what we're doing, and we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> but boy, it is good. We just tasted it a while ago. And I know it don't look too good what's coming off the top there, but look at here. Yep. 
So we've had a major change here, so I think we're about to the done point. Yeah, can y'all see how the bubbles look now? They, I've always heard the bubbles change when it's about done, and I mean, they have changed big time. We don't have a good thermometer holder. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, show them how we think it's done anyway. So we believe it's done. See how it's a string instead of dropping? So from everything we've been told, that's one surefire way to know it's done. And not only that, the temperature was right too. So, we're going to set this bad boy off of here. For anybody wondering, we checked it at 225 degrees. Pick it up. Oh, Lord, that ain't heavy. What well, weighs a lot less than it did when we put it on there? Yeah, So then, what I've read anyway, it's got to cool off to 190, and then we'll put it in the jars. Oh, that cheese off. It's not burning. Y'all, it just took us two days to get to this point. But look at this. Look at that. Now it almost looks like honey. And I don't know why it's so light colored when this over here, that's the other pot, is darker. And most of the molasses I've eaten in the past has a darker color to it, but I have seen it with light color too. So I have no idea what determines this color, but it's got the right consistency. It's, uh, tastes, tastes great. Um, Megan, she's fixing to try it on a piece of biscuit here. It's palm bread, thank you. I'm sorry, she's trying it on her palm bread. I got up this morning and made my sweet husband sausage and eggs and palm bread for breakfast. Isn't that right? That's right. She was ready to get to work this morning. I told him I thought the smell of breakfast would wake him up. That was at what time? Six? <laughs> it was Is it good? Yeah, it's good. I'll try some in a minute. I got to get back to this other pot. I tell you what, it's took all day long, but this feeling of accomplishment was totally worth it. The spider fell into my dog. It I did. I got it out. <laughs> it's a very sticky job. Yeah, that's one thing for sure. You better be around water if you're going to do this because it's very sticky. But I think it's so cool. So cool. That, and then to, to see, to just see the difference in the molasses as it's cooking. And it's almost obvious when it gets done because it changes that much. Just all of a sudden. Yeah, it's just like all of a sudden and then you really have to start paying attention to it at that point till it reaches 200 and, well, we did ours to 225 degrees. Easy. A little bit more. A little bit more. color that looks about the same right? mm -hmm. it does. it's really darkened up too since it's cooled off that other batch did so i'm not too i'm not too concerned my grandma's down here and she looked at it and she said it looked great and she tasted it and she tasted it and said it was said it was on point yep and she is a molasses connoisseur that she is she loves molasses she grew up i'm, I'm pretty sure her family grew up doing molasses <laughs> and 
getting a permanent place set up to be cooking this every year because I almost could say the last, I don't know, it's, it's almost like the fever's hit me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> she said, oh, Lord. <laughs> we plan us two acres of this stuff next year. I better be finding somebody else to work at that. Right. <laughs> and guys, just remember, if you had not checked out part one and part two, if you don't know what we're talking about, I'll be sure to link those too, as this was a three-part series. From start to finish, from the field to the jar. Well, we're going to try some of our molasses on some of my homemade biscuits. This is the ultimate test right here. Yep. We're already pretty sure it's good. But this is the first time that we've sat down and actually uh, ate it. Ooh, y'all. Yeah, I got a little carried away. <laughs> Oh, and it's still warm. Yep, so it's still a little bit runny, but it's looks good. It smells good. Mmm. Tastes good. And it tastes good. <laughs> tastes good. Mmm. Mm. Well. That's maybe, good. maybe just beginner's luck, but it turned out pretty good. Now, I'm sure throughout this three-part series, you probably saw a bunch of stuff we've done wrong. We probably did. And if you <laughs> did, and you know anything about molasses making, tell us, so we'll know. <laughs> Please you know. do. But, um... Because what we know about making molasses was just told to us by people who we know that do it. And YouTube University. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep. We really, I mean, y'all, this is the first time we've ever had anything at all to do with this cooking molasses. foreign language to us. But it, it all just seemed, once we done it, everything just kind of worked itself out. Like, you could just, you could see the changes in it when you were cooking it down. And, you know, I know a lot of old timers don't have to look at thermometers and stuff like that to know when it's done. And. Honestly, I can see how that's true because you can see such a huge difference in the way that stuff changes. And it, and there at the end, when it changes, it changes so fast. And that's the real critical part is right there at the end. And uh, it was fun, y'all. It was really fun. And I don't know, is it bad to say that I'm proud of us? <laughs> I really am. Like, y'all don't know feel the feeling. Like, feel accomplished. It's a good feeling to know because this has been something that I've been scared of. Mm -hmm. I've really been scared of doing this. It's something neither one of us have ever... I mean, usually all the stuff that we do, guys... It's stuff we've done, for yeah. the most part. Yeah. We've right. never done this. Yeah. We've just heard stories. So. And so far, my mom has tried it and my grandma have tried it. And they both said that it is really good. And they are They're both, very honest people. <laughs> yeah, they're very honest people, but they're both experienced in molasses, too. They've ate good and they've ate bad. But, I mean, I trust their opinion. Making your biscuits a little crumbly. I don't know. But golly. That's good. I just hope next year, when we do a big batch, we can do it just as good. Like I said, beginner's luck. Yeah, it may have been beginner's <laughs> luck. Next year, we may just screw it all up. That was good. It's like eating candy. It really is. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this is all natural. I guess. You know, I was reading that uh, sour gum syrup does not have the same properties as regular sugar. So if you're a diabetic, it does not make your blood sugar fluctuate like. Really? Like refined sugar. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. Because refined sugar shoots your blood sugar up like real fast. And I said, this don't, they don't do that. Hmm. As sweet as that is. like. And I also tried a little bit of it. Yeah, I know. I am so proud of you too. <laughs> I bet it be, would be good on some pancakes. I bet it would be. What do you think, Jacob? Mm -hmm. Would you eat some of black syrup on pancakes? Mm. Y'all know I was talking about the color of it. It darkened up. Some. Quite a bit. Yeah. Some as dark as some I've seen. It ain't black. No, it's not black. But my grandma, when she come down here today, she said you don't want it black. She said the sign of it's like good good molasses is lighter it's not, color. Yeah. 
That's what she said, and she's the woman that would know. So, yeah, like I said, her her <laughs> her parents grew up. Well, she grew up doing it, so she knows a little bit more about it. Of course, that's been a long time ago. Don't tell you, poor grandma B. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, guys, we really appreciate you watching. We hope you enjoyed this entire series. If you did, please consider giving it a share. If you know somebody that would enjoy this, enjoy watching it or learn a little something. And as always, guys, we appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, anyways, I guess we'll see you on the next one. We'll see y'all next time. Thank you.